going on folks it's lando from today's tech and let's talk about beats studio buds the latest offering from beats by dre and only my second beats product the first were the power beats pro which i love the wing design there was just no way they could fall out my only gripe was that the call quality and the bluetooth connection on android was absolutely terrible so in come the studio buds let's see if apple can redeem themselves if you will i mean They've already earned some points in my book based on the fact that active noise cancellation and transparency mode work on both sides of the fence and they're only 150 bucks. But let's take a look at the whole picture. So for starters in the box, you get the studio buds, a little mini USB-C cable and extra ear tips in small and large sizes in case the mediums don't fit. And I'm actually glad to see this beat sticker too. Now, Sheesh, I absolutely love the matte red colorway. It's a very vibrant and punchy red, and it definitely grabs your attention. Now the case is a bit on the larger side, so expect a little bit of a bulge in your pocket. Like it's bigger than both the AirPods Pro and the Galaxy Buds Pro case, but it's, it's manageable. The buds themselves have a nice two-tone look with a matte finish on the base of the bud and a shiny finish on the button. And I love the design. The Studio Buds are actually the best fitting in-ear earbuds that I've tried. Now by in-ear, I mean no stem like the AirPods Pro. So I'm comparing the Galaxy Buds Pro and Galaxy Buds Live. The Buds Pro are a little bit too bulky to stay in your ear and the Buds Live stay in very well, but they don't have the silicone tip that creates a nice seal. Now, obviously the Studio Buds do have a silicone tip and the mediums that they come out of the box with fit perfectly. And I usually have to go with the larger size. And if you noticed, they have the perfect grip for putting them in and taking them out. It's like a little handle. And I love that about these earbuds, just in and out super quick with a little twist. And then the magnets on these are stronger than any of the Galaxy Buds. You can't shake them out and they can even be a little tough to take out if you have sweaty hands. But Better safe than sorry. Now, at first, I thought the button was super hard to click, resulting in me just jamming the earbuds into my ear, but it turns out it's only the top portion of the earbuds that's the button, and it actually clicks really easily. You get your single press for play pause, double press to go forward, triple to go back, and a long press to toggle between transparency mode and active noise cancellation but each bud is customizable so you can change either of them to activate an assistant like Siri or Google Assistant. Now the noise cancellation on these bad boys is really good. I can hear myself talk, but I can't hear others or hear myself snapping as loud as I can or hear the air conditioning in my apartment, which is obnoxiously loud. And there isn't any of the white noise you get with some other earbuds. It sounds very well tuned. The same with transparency mode. It sounds really good, but it just doesn't amplify outside noise as good as some other earbuds. It really just sounds like it stops canceling outside noise based on the seal from the silicone tip. I only have one complaint with the Studio Buds and that is the mic quality. That seems to be the toughest aspect for companies to nail. So I was driving in the car on the phone with my mom and I'm like, mom, I'm testing out some new earbuds. How do I sound? And she literally said, terrible. You need to throw them in the trash. So here's a quick mic test. All right, so I'm just at my desk in my office. Got the air conditioning on in the background and that's it, no other noise going on in the house. And uh, this is how they sound. Yeah, it, it sounds pretty bad. You can clearly hear the central air conditioning and my voice just doesn't sound clear. So yeah, not the best for taking calls, which is a bit of a bummer for me because I'm on the phone quite a bit. When it comes to sound, I'm certainly no audiophile, but they sound really, really good. They sound well balanced between the highs, mids, and lows. Now, they're not the bassiest earbuds I've tried, but very well tuned. However, you can't manually tune them like you can on some other earbuds, but it's really not a huge deal. It sounds like they nailed the tuning, at least for the genres that I listen to, so zero complaints on that front. On the iPhone, they do support spatial audio in Apple Music, if that's your cup of tea but they lack the head tracking you get on the AirPods Pro. I personally don't think that's a necessary feature for music, and I certainly wasn't impressed when I tried it. 
it sounds a lot more muffled and the, the volume is even a little bit lower. So I prefer the Dolby Atmos on Samsung devices simply because it's not as dramatic in my opinion. But I really like that you can download the Beats app on Android. It incorporates the same functionality you get on an iPhone and even a nice battery notification. So the Studio Buds were definitely intentionally made to cater to the Android crowd as well as the Apple crowd. Unlike the Powerbeats Pro, which I had a ton of connection issues with. And if you're on the iPhone, they do lack an H1 or W1 chip that you may have become accustomed to in AirPods or other Beats products. So you don't get iCloud sync, meaning no auto device switching, which I'm totally fine with. It didn't seem to work seamlessly in my testing and it's really just been pissing my wife off. And then there's two more quick features that they lack. One, there's no proximity sensor. So when you take them out, they keep playing until you pause or put one back in the case. And two, on the iOS side of things, they lack the U1 chip. So you won't be able to locate these puppies using the Find My network if you're not within Bluetooth range. But even more evidence that these cater to Android is the USB-C plug but you only get this little mini six inch cable. I've just been using a normal cable and left that one in the box. Now there's no wireless charging, which is not really a big deal to me. I'm more of a wired charging kind of guy just cause it's way faster, but I know that's a downside to a lot of you guys. But hey, five minutes will save you 15% or more on car insurance. Nah, just kidding. It'll just get you an hour of playback while a full charge will get you eight hours of playback plus two full charges in the case for a total of 24 hours with active noise cancellation off. With ANC on, you can expect five hours of playback and an additional 10 hours from the case. So roughly on par with most earbuds, I know I personally only use them for about an hour at a time, so they last several days for me. And they're great gym companions. They're water and sweat resistance. They have a really secure fit. They sound good and they have some style. I had no issues with them falling out even on the battle ropes and I sweat like a cow and they weren't going anywhere. So overall, I think these are very solid earbuds. I mean, the mic quality isn't too hot, but if you don't spend a lot of time on the phone, then it won't matter. So are the Studio Buds worth 150 bucks? Well, let me know what you think with a comment down below the subscribe button, but personally, I would say that they are. They're pretty on par with most earbuds in this price range, maybe even a slight step above most. So they get the Today's Tech stamp of approval from me. And with that being said, thank you so much for supporting the channel by sticking around until the end. Always appreciated. If you found the video helpful or informative, then smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to get to know me better, then follow me on my socials at Tech with Lando. Alrighty guys, peace and love. Yeah.